Thanks, Sergi. All right. Um, so, hi, my name is Lawrence, and then this is Michael, and this is um, Jason. So, hey guys. Um, so we're here today to talk about cloud um, optimized HDD standardization process. Um, this is what we actually believe, um, and has. Um, Jason um, Taylor from Facebook um, yesterday has pointed out in a keynote speech, this is kind of the tip of the iceberg. We believe that this, if we actually succeed, if we can actually work together to standardize many of these things um, for our cloud HDDs, we believe that we can help us accelerate uh, many of these potential new technologies, architectures, and development um, in the future. There are a lot that we actually have in mind in terms of what we want to do. And what we're showing you today is really just the tip of the iceberg, okay? Um, so first, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about the history. So Google actually presented the Disk for Data Center white paper last year. This paper is publicly available online. You can search it. You can, uh, you can look for it. Um, it was actually presented by Google in both the FAST conference and the OCP summit um, last year. It actually has a lot of meat in that white paper in that we talked about many interesting ideas uh, of things that we can potentially do. And Jason will talk about what has happened since then. All right, thanks, Lawrence. Uh, so at OCP, we talk about being open, you know, talking about some of the challenges we have, some that we can solve together as a community. You know, at the hyperscale, you know, our challenges are not always unique. There are many times we have a lot of overlap. We have the same challenges. So, you know, over the last few years, we've talked to various hard drive vendors, various peers in the community, but it's always been a one-to-one -one conversation. We haven't really had this large group conversation where we hear a single unified voice. Uh, so after that last uh, the presentation of the white paper, and then we had the last OCP summit, we realized this is a great opportunity to leverage OCP, to use the benefit of a community to share what we're actually looking for. So as I mentioned, the hyperscale challenges are not unique. We ch we challenge the way that traditional enterprise has approached storage, what we see as a hard drive, what we're expecting from a hard drive. You know, as we talk about erasure coding versus standard RAID codes, um, the challenges change. We're willing to make different trade-offs than some other companies might. So we got together and we said, all right, what are these areas of overlap? What are some of these low-hanging fruit that we can talk about and that we can work on together as a team? Um, a few things sort of bubbled up to the top, things like variable capacity what trade-offs we can make, whether it's uncorrectable error rates um, that we're willing to tolerate. You know, what benefit would that bring when you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of spindles um, in our infrastructures? Uh, we talked about alternative form factors and parallel IOs. You know, what if we broke the mold of the standard SFF? You know, this is a drive, this is the interface. Could we come up with something different? Are there certain workloads or use cases that are fundamental to a hyperscale um, infrastructure that maybe the current infrastructure does not support very well. Could we make trade-offs? Are there certain things that we would choose to do differently than a legacy enterprise storage um, company might? We talked about advanced queuing and caching. Again, when you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of spindles, you may choose to forget about a certain I.O. You're like, it's taking a little bit too long. Let's go for the greater good versus a certain I.O. So we started talking about these various things and we found a lot of common overlap. And that's why we're here today, and that's why we started working together in general. Um, so obviously, through the OCP, we want to do this. It's the three of us today that are trying to present an idea of how we might start a standardization process. But we're certainly looking for everybody to come talk to us, work with the OCP community, and really participate. And together as a team, we can talk about some of these challenges and some new ways to think about how we interface with a rotating drive platform. So to add, thanks Jason, to add a little bit, um, we need the hard drive industry to be successful executing on a roadmap for these type of technologies. The, the data growth in the cloud, unlike other segments served by hard drives, is growing exponentially. Um, and so we really need the drives and the, the roadmaps uh, from the drive companies to happen in so we have products that provide usable capacity. And there's a number of uh, things that are unique to scale out storage systems that may make the capacity less than use, usable. There, there's a number of things that impact these type of architectures. 
And so we do think there, we would benefit from sharing the usage models uh, that are important and the, the proposal for how we would uh, address that in a standard way so it can be adopted in the operating systems and then in the, in the scale-out storage uh, systems. And so what we're proposing is we'd have a new process where anybody could bring in uh, an idea that they thought would benefit uh, scale-out storage, so we, we arbitrarily try to define that a storage system of on the order of 10,000 drives or more, so that the types of things that would benefit that. Um, what, what is the proposal? What is the use cases? How would you test it? Um, and then we would iterate it in this, in this body for, for a period of time to be, to be uh, determined at the, at the onset of the proposal. We'd say, here's the proposal. We're going to work on it for a couple months and, and solidify this new standard. Um, and you know, we, we think targeting one to two months for most things is reasonable, but that would be part of the proposal. Um, and so in, this, in one of the big differences that we've seen compared to uh, how standards have been going uh, in addition to the, the different focus is that a lot of the, the standards work focuses on the APIs out of context. And so, uh, you know, we have an example there of, you know, there may be a, a field uh, that is specified with a, a label, but its, its function and how it would be used in practice is, is less left, uh, you know, arbitrary uh, or unclear. And so when somebody comes in with an idea, we would explain what the usage is, um, you know, how this will address it, how we would test to make sure that somebody is compliant, so what the usage around the standard. Um, and then we'd iterate on that. And so we think, uh, you know, our goals are to make things clear and usable quickly for this new, uh, for this type of deployment, these, these scale-out storage systems that have, have unique uh, requirements or sensitivities. And so we're proposing a, a formal new process. We, we haven't, uh, um, we haven't uh, uh, started, started the, the paperwork or anything like that. We're, we're proposing it. And, uh, and that, that's uh, exactly uh, what we're doing. So. And so the, the process we're proposing is somebody would come in, they'd have their problem statement, uh, and, and how, how, they'd, uh, how they'd propose uh, to solve it. Uh, they'd have a, ideally in a, dra a draft of what they think uh, would be a good solution. Uh, a plan and schedule for the standardization, um, and then within the community, we we discuss it with everybody so it understands what we're trying to solve. We'd iterate together, uh, you know, look if you know, maybe we just have to add more clarity around uh, aspects of certain standards, or do we need something new? Uh, we'd gain some consensus, and we'd have uh, standardization on on both the interfaces and also the usage test cases. Um, and then, you know, once we've had it standardized, uh, we would expect uh, OCP accepted devices to be available pretty, sh pretty short, uh, uh, shortly thereafter. And then if there's additional standardization uh, needed uh, through the appropriate technology committees, we could also do that. And so this is, this is uh, what we're envisioning. Right. So, thanks, Michael. Um, so yeah, as Michael was, um, and Jason actually alluded to earlier, um, so we really want to be working with all of you guys together on this. We actually welcome any idea that you guys actually have um, for a large scale, uh, scale out type of uh, distributed uh, file system. Um, and the number we're kind of thinking about is on the world order of 10,000 hard drives or more in that single um, distributed file system. And this is kind of a process trial run. So we think that it might be best to explain the process that we have with an example. So if this process actually gets standardized within OCP, uh, we're thinking about proposing this, which is a fast fail read uh, proposal. Uh, as the very initial proposal to test run the process to see how well the process can actually work and how well we can work together with the rest of the industry. So let me kind of explain uh, what fast fail read is uh, in more details and what we're planning to do there. 
So the problem statement. Uh, first, let me kind of explain a little bit, give a little bit about background about how what HDD, how HDD behaves, and how a distributed file system works at a very, very high level. So HDD, uh, what basically, let's say, look at a picture on the right. Basically, there's an image file I've stored on the HDD, and the user is trying to read that image file from HDD. Usually, when I read that file, the file returns pretty quickly. I might be able to get it within 10 milliseconds. Okay? It's fast enough that the user actually doesn't quite feel any kind of a delay. But sometimes, at 99.9 .9 percentile, so what that number basically means is one out of every 1,000 times, so this is the 99.9 .9 percentile, sometimes that one out of 1,000 times, the hard drives might be a little bit slow. It might take us, say, 500 milliseconds in order to actually read that piece of data, to read that image coming out of the hard drive. At the data center level, what's kind of interesting is that we care a lot about availability. Uh, what that basically means is that sometimes a hard drive might disappear for a number of different reasons. The hard drive might actually have gone bad. Um, there might be other things happening at the system level. Other things might actually be acting up that causes us to not be able to read that piece of data from the first hard disk. Well, if so, we actually store data replicated in certain ways on multiple hard drives. In this example over here, I've shown that that single image is stored on two hard drives in this given data center. And so the user can potentially read that image from any one of these two hard drives and would still be able to get that image. And so if the first hard drive is actually slow, well, uh, or in this case, sorry, if the second hard drive, the hard drive on the left is actually slow, well, I can actually read from the hard drive on the right, right? So in other words, we can actually pick where we actually want to do the read. But when that actually happens, it would actually be nice for the very first hard drive or the drive on the left to actually abandon the read request so that it is actually freed up to do something else, so that a second user can still access that hard drive. A lot of times when a hard drive is actually slow, it's actually slow for a certain uh, reason. It might oftentimes be actually localized. Well, that basically means that if that hard drive cannot return an image file, the hard drive might still be useful to actually do other work. And so the second user might potentially want other work coming out of that hard drive. And so if that hard drive becomes freed up, then we can actually get greater utilization, greater efficiency, in within the data center so that we actually have more accesses have, um, across all the HDDs as much as possible and don't have any of them waiting there sitting uh, for an I.O. to complete even though we no longer need it because of the way that distributed file system works. So that's kind of the problem statement at a very high level. And so the proposed interface, and this is the part where we really want to work with all of you guys in OCP uh, to actually figure out, hey, what actually makes sense. Right. The proposed interface is basically very simple. Um, so given this previous problem, why don't we have two policy for reads? Right. The first one is the case I, I've explained earlier, where if I actually cannot read, read something from the disk, that's OK. Just fail really quickly. So that means if I ask for a piece of data from a hard drive, if you cannot return within, say, some number of milliseconds, say 50 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, something like that, don't wait the full 500 milliseconds and tell me that you can return the data because it's no longer useful. Tell me ahead of time. Tell me at a 50 millisecond mark, 100 millisecond mark, that I cannot get the data back to you in time. And that's okay, right? We'll just fail that read. And that failing that read is perfectly fine for a distributed file system. The second policy is the regular read. Uh, and this can potentially be useful, for example, when, hey, I'm trying to read from two disks. Both of them are having trouble uh, returning the read. And in that case, yes, I actually want the disk to read really, really hard so that I can actually get the data back. And so it's, the proposal is actually quite simple. Uh, it's really just finding ways to have these two interfaces. Uh, and then as uh, Michael was explaining before about how there are uh, the T10, T13 committees. So the idea here is if there are existing protocols that we can leverage, great then there's no new standardization needed in T10, T13. Uh, we basically standardize within OCP saying that if we want this behavior, this is the exact interface we're going to use under T10, under T13 for a SAS drive or a SATA drive. And we basically agree on that use case. We define how we actually want to do this, define the interfaces, define the test cases. There's no standardization needed in T10, T13. If there's work needed over there, well, then that's evaluated option, right? Uh, and so it's a pretty open-ended problem. But the goal over here is basically to address the particular use case. And in this case, it's a use case that I kind of explained on a previous slide. Uh, to bound the problem a little bit um, for this fast fail reproposal, there are several other things we can potentially do uh, that would be very interesting in the future to address. Uh, 
So while these things can actually address this given problem right here today, they're a, a bit broader in nature. They're very interesting for us to work on, uh, but I'm hoping that for, we're actually hoping that for the fast fail read, um, if we actually focus on just that simple interface proposal, then it would be easier for us to test a process. So the things that are listed over here is one is advanced queuing and caching management. Well, if I have full control of the queue and the cache and so on, I can then say, hey, this IO goes first, that IO goes next. If an IO has certain delays and so on, can I do cancellation? Can I do this and that? So that's all very interesting, uh, but it's a much broader problem, uh, problem set to solve. The second one over here is the events host management of disk background activities. So sometimes we might not be able to read a piece of data from a disk because a disk is busy doing something. It's busy doing something in the background in order to help uh, provide better uh, bit error rate. It might be doing background scanning, background recovery, things like that in order to guarantee, hey, the bits that we're storing on the disks are actually really reliable. And so if we actually have a way to manage that, that can also help cut down the tail latency and so that we actually don't run into this problem as often. And then the last one over here is along the same lines. Hey, if we have advanced logging or health monitoring, can we predictably know, hey, when the hard drive is going to become slow and so on, then we can potentially redirect the traffic somewhere else. So the thing to remember here is that the distributed file system is an incredibly complex piece of system that all of us have actually tuned given our workload, given our set of um, software stack in our data center. These are all variables and knobs that we can actually play with. But fundamentally, down beneath at the HDD level, there's a number of uh, problem statements that we've stated earlier that are very similar among all of us. And we're basically hoping to work with all of you um, together for anyone who's actually interested in a large scale out uh, distributed file system um, to help take these ideas forward, standardize these quickly within OCP um, so that we actually uh, can move forward and actually do more and more interesting stuff because there are a lot of very interesting ideas down the pipeline that we would like to standardize and work with all of you on. And that's it. So we've went through all of these really, really quickly. I suspect that you guys have a lot of questions. So like Georgie mentioned earlier, this will be more of a Q&A session. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, questions? Okay, I have one. So for the, um, the fast fail read, um, I, I guess one concern is that uh, generally if a read fails, that triggers a check condition, which then also goes through and, and starts a lot of recovery processes from the operating system. So uh, how, how would we implement fast read in such a way that would avoid all of that extra work? <laughs> Great question. Okay, um, so the idea here is if we actually want to do this, um, we would also be doing the relative things, the related things on the higher level. So for example, um, Google and Facebook both contribute to the uh, Linux um, file system, uh, open source, um, the Linux open source kernel and the various Linux file system. So we can potentially work together over there to ensure that many of these hooks are properly in place. Uh, Microsoft also, actually I'll let you speak. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, Microsoft and our scale-out systems, we build upon a, a standard Windows server, and so we would make sure um, that the file system or other interfaces is uh, set up, and, and we work closely with the uh, OS team to make sure uh, they meet the needs for this type of usage. All right. Um, as you know, don't, uh, in order your proposal to go forward, we need uh, drive vendors to, to cooperate with you guys. My question is, have you first of all contacted them? There are not that many actually. And, <laughs> and secondly, there are a lot of them present here. Secondly, what, what's their response? Yeah, so we've contacted them and, and many of them are in this room. I, I think it's the whole, all of them. They, they are participating. So we've, we've had a separate offsite with them. We, we prepped all this stuff. Uh, we, we meet with them regularly. Um, you know, so all the hard drive segments, you know, you have client and enterprise storage and cloud. There's only one of those that's going up is, is this cloud storage. All the rest are going to SSDs and are, are potentially shrinking markets anyway. Um, and so, but this, this particular one is growing exponentially. 
um, you know, data doubling every year or something along that lines. And so uh, having a process that, that allows us to innovate and, and have attractive products for that uh, segment, we, I think everybody recognizes is good for all participants in the industry. And so we talked about the single voice, right? So by talking together with the hard drive vendors, you know, normally each vendor or each company may provide different input. We would like it A, we would like it 90% of A, and then 10% a little bit different. By having this conversation together at the same time, we can discuss some of these trade-offs. So instead of the drive vendors getting different proposals that may have a lot of overlap, we can try to unify our voice and try to get you know, one single proposal where possible. That's less variations of firmware, less variations to qualify. I mean, overall, it should allow a simpler adoption of some of these technologies. Yeah, on uh, Lawrence's slide on, on the proposal, you know, he listed three additional things. All four of those things are interesting to, to a broad set of people. And a different one may be on the top of the different companies' list. And, so Facebook be, could be saying, do this, and Google do this, and Microsoft do this, it just because that's what we're thinking about at the time. And so the lack of a clearly articulated set of requirements, uh, we think, is holding up some innovation and adoption. And uh, we got, after the paper that was presented last year, we got together, just us three on the side, and said, you know, our, how, how much overlap is there on our problem space? And basically, there was almost 100% overlap in our opinion of what hard drives should do, what their shortcomings are, uh, what type of roadmap we need. And, but, you know, as I say, we were each, um, you know, given different parts of the same input or different, you know, similar but different solutions to the same problems, uh, you know, in, in vacuum. And so now um, we're, we're trying to uniformly provide, you know, well-articulated input, um, and and often, you know, we chat on the side about different ideas, and there's a lot more discussion because of uh, that was all started because of this paper, and and we've continued those side discussions and stuff. So uh, I think this is a very interesting effort. I like the fact that it's such a you know multi-industry collaboration and with the with the vendors. Besides uh, looking at commands and APIs, are you looking at other practices that could be uh, you could create standards? For instance, I know that there's uh, some people that are delivering. You know, you're buying a whole bunch of drives. You get an average capacity, but it's not a single capacity. Are you thinking of uh, standards and things along um, other sorts of practices as well? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's an example of things, you know, we had independently discussed with, you know, some of the technology suppliers. So a lot of the uh, algorithms that the drive guys use to do their cache control, their queuing control, their error recovery, all that's very proprietary to them, of course. Uh, there's, a, as you know, a lot of IP in the uh, drive industry, so it's not an open <laughs> kind of industry thus far. But I'm curious, though, do you guys actually want to try to manage that level of detail? Because what you're talking about, managing caching and managing queue, is it's very drive dependent. It's going to change from model to model. I mean, it's going to put a huge workload on you guys, whereas the drive industry guys, that's what they do. They know how to optimize their queues and optimize their cache. So so the point of you know an API or an abstraction is is to allow people to innovate on the other side, and so things like the queuing control to make, for example, a, a write buffer useful, you need to know have some way of knowing if the data has actually been committed, which is the minimum. How they actually write that or even when they do is is up to them. Um, you know, there's some point that you know maybe we have the data. Um, either safe somewhere else in the system, non volatile memory or something like that, or we haven't acknowledged it to the writer, uh, you know, they can take as long as, you know, we agree is acceptable. Um, but so a lot of, you know, the point of an API is to define where each side can innovate and, and how they communicate. So. Uh, and to elaborate on what Michael just said, the other way to also look at this, and it's important that he mentioned on both sides, because across the distributed file system that we have already built and the hierarchical storage management system layers that's actually um, really deeply built on top, we also have a queue, we also have a cache. So we actually have 
done a lot of these things at a higher level as well. The question is, because right now there is no such tight interface being defined between the, the distributed file system and the HDD itself, it's very hard for these two sides to cooperate. It's very hard to pass information from one side to another. And so if we can collaborate more, if we can pass information down there more, there's, uh, there are a lot of opportunities for us to innovate. So um, to perhaps answer your earlier question or perhaps concern is that the goal is not to ask HDD vendors to give out their proprietary um, IPs or, or ideas and make it public. The idea is basically to say, hey, through OCP, this is something where all of us can participate, including cloud companies like us or HDD vendors as well, where if we want to define API, let's all meet together, let's all come together and discuss what type of API actually makes sense and what level uh, we should actually set it to that makes sense so that it is better for us to co collaborate and engineer that system together as a whole. Uh, hi, uh, Eric Redell from uh, Dell EMC. Uh, Lawrence, in your, in your paper um, from Google, there was a number of hardware concepts that were described, multi-drive packages or taller drives and so on. Would you imagine this, this group also taking on kind of physical types of, of prototypes or in examinations or evaluations? That's our dream. <laughs> yes. Uh, we're hoping to start from the firmware because we think that there are a lot of low-hanging fruits in the firmware and it is a lot more doable in the short term. But as we succeed, as we continue to move forward, I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, on that one, you know, we've talked about it. And so the current form factor, there's a lot of slots it fits into. And so in order for something to replace it, it would have to be dramatically better and it would have to be standardized as far as the form factor. And if, you know, we went, uh, you know, without talking, people would innovate and have their own concepts that are similar but different, and they really wouldn't get adopted. And so um, we think this is a good form to accelerate that next level of optimization uh, of performance and capacity, which both have to get better. Yeah, to add a little bit more to that, I mean, if you're not following the volume of where the drives are being consumed, if any one of us tried to come out with a different form factor, I mean, it's a lot less chance of adoption, just like you said. You know, if we're having this in more open discussion, similar to prior standard risk bodies, but moving a little bit faster, because our challenge is we need to meet sooner rather than later. You know, some of the archaic processes, you know, a lot of legacy um, that's been there. So we'd like to move a little bit faster, um, but at the same time, we don't want to jump too far ahead and leave ourselves, you know, um, with a solution that only fits some applications. It doesn't address, you know, all the challenges we're looking to um, overcome. I can, uh, I can imagine four reasons why a, a drive might fail your fast fail read. First one, we can't get the heads there in time, no matter what we do. Second one. We could get them there, but we're already busy doing other commands you already gave us. Third, we are either in the middle of background activities or we're about to start them. And fourth, we can get there in time, and unbeknownst to us, we're going to fail and have to do a bunch of retries. So the first three of those, we know in advance. You give us a command, we know it immediately. Do you want to hear that then, or do you want to wait until the deadline is passed for us to tell you we failed? I think it would be better for us to know about it, but then for this kind of conversation, I really want to have this in OCP as we actually, so once the process is actually um, being uh, adopted and standardized, I want to have this discussion in OCP. I think that's a great comment, yep, and, and a great discussion to have. And, and there are many potential ways to actually implement this and how the drive can let the host know uh, different ways and different status. Because yep. um, if, in the case where we say we can't make it and it's because we're, we're busy doing other things, maybe there's some way for you to say, no, no, this is important, do this instead. Uh, yes, so that's also kind of in the plan, but not initially in scope uh, within the, 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 the initial fast fail read. So, so yes, later down the world, as we actually have um, queue management and things like that, there are more and more interesting things that we actually want to to pass down to the drive, because the higher level system actually knows the priority of each I.O., because some I.O.s are really important, some I.O.s are not as important, and so on. So. If, if, if it's just, if we want you to do this in this time, and we 
say, no, we can't because of some reason that maybe we could fix, and you just say, hey, this is really important. We're not having to expose any of our inner workings to you. We're just saying we can't do it because we don't know how important it is to you, and then you tell us, yes, it's really important. Right. I think that's the interface that we can actually collaborate on, and, and that, that would be a really interesting discussion. Yes. More questions? Comments? So what happens when OCP moves faster than like the traditional T13, T10 committees? Who has precedence? Right, so the idea here is um, if there's a standardization in the in the actual protocol that actually belongs to T10, T13. The idea here is let's take the fast fail read, for example. If we actually need certain bits uh, defined or redefined within, say, T10 or T13, what I would imagine happening is basically we would basically have some kind of a initial collaboration with the T10 and T13 groups, depending on which one uh, is more relevant, and then based on some preliminary feedback and based on the people who are in OCP who are participating, and by the way, many of them are also member T10 and T13, um, we're actually hoping to basically standardize something within OCP and that we think will, will have a pretty good chance of getting standardized or has some chance, some relatively good chance of getting standardized in T10 T13. And once it's standardized in OCP, we actually want to see those drives, okay? Uh, we want to see hard drives actually adhering to OCP spec and then standardizing within T10, T13. Once it gets standardized in T10, T13, if it actually changes, T13, T10, T13 always has uh, the, uh, the higher precedence. It always rules over OCP because that is where the standards are being defined. And so based on that definition, T10, T13, we can potentially come back and modify the OCP spec. We can potentially say, hey, look, it's actually compatible if the changes are actually additional, the things that augment. The, so, so it becomes more of a case-by-case -case scenario. But at the end, T10, T13 always trumps OCP. And the thinking over here is we can probably standardize this a lot faster in OCP than we can in T10, T13, and that's okay. So. That's kind of our intent and, and thinking. Hey, Lance, how are you doing? Um, this, is, this, is a, this is a complex conversation, and, um, but I think the time has come to have this complex conversation. Um, I think it causes a lot of disruption, different data centers providing very different guidance to vendors. And you know, I think we'll figure out all the mechanics but, um, you know, I definitely, um, it's good that we're having this, this conversation. I think the time has come to have it. Great, thank you. Thank By the way, can you state your name and company? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, Stephen. So that was Stephen from Apple, thank you. And thanks for the support. <laughs> okay, any more uh, questions, comments? Maybe one more. Yeah, just one quick one. Um, so if, if you guys start playing in cache and re-sequencing commands and stuff and sequences, our performance as a hard drive industry is going to be totally unpredictable. So are you guys okay with the fact that we're going to tell you you have a certain performance, but when we put it in your system, it doesn't perform that way because you're doing, you're resequencing the queues or you're playing with the cache or whatever it happens mm -hmm. to be. Um, so we actually see performance variation from drive to drive between vintages and all of that already today, right? Because we have a lot of hard drives in, in our multiple data centers. It's not just one. Um, so we actually see many of that. So those are things that we already manage today. But the thing is, if we actually work together, I think we can manage this even better. And the idea here is once we actually have better collaboration, if we have a better way to pass information along, we should actually be able to engineer a better system. That's kind of the high level thinking. Does that make sense? Or do you guys have anything to add? I mean, queuing is a complicated thing. There may be interface ways to set that. We don't decide at a very late stage what the priority is. So maybe a set of a small number of priorities and feed in, for example. There's lots of ways to approach that. Um, and so those are uh, interesting areas to work on to group. How do we? tighten the uh, tail latency of the most important 
uh, reads is actually in a mixed environment is actually a very, very important uh, item for this space. Um, one, one more thing I forgot to mention um, actually in the slide deck is that the next steps over here for the process is that we're going to bring this up one last time in the um, OCP storage monthly call next time. And then after that, we're planning to bring this forward and propose this for approval in the OCP incubation committee. So um, if you guys have more questions, comments, uh, please send them to the OCP storage uh, email mailing list or show up in the next uh, OCP storage uh, monthly meeting. Um. <laughs> right. All right. Okay, well thank you very much. Okay.